Disc brakes have become an increasingly important part of the road bike world over the past few years. But while the benefits of disc brakes are well documented, they bring with them challenges and problems too. Here are some of the issues that we've experienced and heard about. Before we get into the annoying things about disc brakes, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like this video. Well, if you like it, uh, subscribe as that really helps out the channel. And you can click the bell icon to get notified when we post a new video. This really is the most annoying thing about disc brakes. With tight tolerances, small rotors, and fast riding speeds, you've got a combination that is prone to rubbing. The ting 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 that you often hear after braking is the pistons failing to return instantly to their original positions. Larger rotors can be a fix for this, though us weight obsessed roadies will often be reluctant to make our bikes that bit heavier. Early disc equipped bikes borrowed the 74 mm post mount standard from mountain bikes, where the brake caliper is simply bolted directly onto the frame or fork and adapters are used to accommodate different rotor sizes. To try and improve the appearance of discs on road bikes, Shimano introduced its flat mount system. It's an open standard that has been quickly adopted by other disc brake manufacturers. The vast majority of new disc brake road bikes are flat mount. There's no doubt that flat mount disc calipers are smaller, better looking and lighter than the bulkier post mount calipers. The actual caliper mechanism is identical and there are no changes to the way the hose connects and the brake pads are installed. The key difference is in the way the caliper is mounted to the frame. Where post mount calipers are bolted from above directly onto the frame and fork, flat mount calipers sit flush with the frame and fork and the bolts are threaded in from below and directly into the caliper, pulling it down onto the frame. At the front, the caliper is fixed to a thin adapter which is bolted to the fork. We've had mostly good experiences with flat mount on the disc equipped bikes that we've tested, but there have been a couple of incidents of brake rub and there's nothing more annoying. We asked Shimano about this problem and it told us that cleanly face mounts are very important. You'd hope a frame or fork manufacturer would make sure that the contact area was right, but in our experience, this isn't always the case. Facing tools ensure the brake mounts on the frame and fork are smooth and level and provide perfect alignment. They're expensive and not really suitable for most home mechanics, although all good bike shops should be able to help you out here. switch to a disc brake bike and you'll eventually have to choose new pads and that is a minefield. All pads are made by mixing various powdered additives with a binding agent and then squashing it all together at high heat and pressure to form a solid block on the backing pad. What's in the mix of powders has a major effect on the pad's properties. Most new bikes come fitted with resin pads. They're made from non-metallic additives such as rubber, glass, carbon and Kevlar to provide an all-round pad that works for most people but isn't very durable under hard use. If you live anywhere hilly and or ride in all weathers then you'll probably better off switching to more expensive but much longer lasting sintered pads, also known as metallic brake pads. These use a very high proportion of metallic fillers such as copper, steel and iron. They provide strong effective braking at high pad temperatures, although their bite can be poor when they're cold and they'll wear out your rotors quicker than resin pads. New disc brake pads and rotors don't immediately perform to their full potential. They need bedding in first. This is a process that distributes pad material over the rotor to increase the friction and maximizes the contact area between the two surfaces. Thankfully, bedding in is a pretty straightforward process. You just need to find a quiet bit of road, get up to around 20 miles an hour, and then bring yourself to a quick stop. Repeat this about 15 to 20 times and you're good to go. Chances are that you know how to adjust rim brakes and swap the pads and probably how to change the cables too. You might have been doing it since you were a kid. Depending on your cycling background, disc brake maintenance might be entirely new to you. One issue you could encounter with hydraulic disc brakes is a soft and mushy feel because of air in the system. This requires bleeding and means either a trip to a bike shop or shelling out on a bleed kit. Each manufacturer has its own bleed kit. Shimano and SRAM, for example, use different techniques and fluid. That said, a good system should only need a bleed once a year, so you can just take your bike to the local shop to have what can be a messy job done for you. If you do fancy giving it a go, you'll likely find that the process is largely straightforward, and after you've done it a few times, you'll wonder what all the fuss was about, that or you'll be covered in disc brake oil and wishing for the return of rim brakes. 
You know we said they could rub, well they can also squeal. It's true that rim brakes can squeal, but we reckon that disc brakes are the worst offenders. Uh, the most common cause of disc brake squealing is contamination of the rotor or pads. You have to be careful when using spray lubricants on a bicycle with disc brakes or avoid them altogether. Cleaning your rotors regularly with a specific disc brake cleaner is a good way to avoid squealing brakes. Cleaning your pads too can help quieten things down. You can try some sandpaper or grind the pads but if the oil has soaked through the pads you might need to replace them don't use a degreaser or chemicals on the brake pads though One of the advantages of disc brakes is that they don't wear out the rims of your posh carbon wheels, but don't forget that you will wear out the disc rotors. Thankfully, rotors aren't particularly expensive. Different brands give different minimum thicknesses for their rotors, and the figure is often printed on the rotors. Go beyond that limit and things become dangerous, so do keep an eye on them. The all-up weight of a disc brake bike is higher than that of a rim brake bike. Levers, brake calipers, hoses, fluid and rotors weigh more than an equivalent rim brake setup. Manufacturers often try to minimise the difference, but don't forget that disc brake hubs are heavier too and disc brake wheels are often built up with more spokes of a wider gauge, although the lack of a brake track means that disc specific rims are generally lighter. The through axles that are used with many disc systems are heavier than quick release skewers. The weight difference isn't huge, but it can be around a pound over the whole bike when everything is taken into account. Like any other external component, disc brakes affect aerodynamics. Some manufacturers have stated that the rim brake version of a particular bike is more aerodynamically efficient than the disc brake model, but it's not as simple as saying that rim brakes are always more aero. When Giant revealed its Propel disc in 2017, for example, it said that the engineers found that with proper integration, a disc brake design can actually improve aero performance compared to rim brake configurations. This is because the location of of traditional rim brakes creates dirty air. Opening up the fork crown area by placing the disc brake calipers down at the hub means that the air hitting the new disc brake caliper has already been disrupted by the leading edge of the tyre or wheel. This might not always be the case, but most new aero road bikes are designed around disc brakes now, so they surely can't be that slow. What would we change about disc brakes? Is perfection too much to ask? We'd also have a mechanic do everything for us in an ideal world, but what would you change? Let us know down in the comments below. If you found this video useful, then give it a like. Remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.